You might already use Google Lens for basic things like identifying objects or translating menus. And maybe you've seen the video I put out years ago in which I go through all the ways I knew to use Google Lens at the time. But in this video, I want to show you five more unexpected uses for Lens that can be really helpful in your everyday tasks. And if you don't already use it or have no idea what it is, don't worry, it's a free tool and it's so easy to get started with. And I think I can show you some ways Lens can assist you that you'll wish you had known about earlier. First, I want to say that yes, Lens is a Google product, but you do not need a Pixel or an Android phone to use it. If you have an iPhone, it's in both the Google app and the Google Photos app. In the Google app, you can access it by tapping the camera looking icon in the search bar. And in the Photos app, just look for the same icon in the bottom menu that's labeled Lens. But even if you don't have a smartphone with the Google app or the Google Photos app, you can still access Lens through your web browser. And yes, any web browser should work, but it is integrated right into the Chrome browser. When you're on any website, there are two ways to access Google Lens. One way is you just click on the three dots on the right of the browser menu bar and then click search with Google Lens. The other way is to just click on the address bar and the Google Lens icon will appear to the right for you to click on. And then you can search anything on the page. If you come across an interesting product you want to learn more about or see where to buy, or if you come across an interesting YouTube video and you see something you want to identify within it, Lens can do a visual search of whatever is on a snapshot of the page at the time. If you don't have a Chrome browser, just go to lens.google.com and you can use Lens on any uploaded image or any image you have a web link for. I also need to say that everything I'm explaining and features I'm highlighting in this video may or may not be available or accessible in the same way if you're watching this video sometime in the future because Chrome updates quite often and apps also update pretty frequently that things can definitely change. I have tried to do things on Lens only to realize it's not supported anymore. In the video I made four years ago about all the ways I knew at the time you could use Lens, one of the features I showed, which is scanning a date, now doesn't seem to work, at least for me, on both my iPhone and my Pixel. Okay, now let's get into the features. One, use Lens as a shopping assistant to quickly make sure you're not wasting your money. Say you come across a product you want to buy at a store and you want to make sure you're getting the very best deal. Don't waste your time typing in the name of the item into your Google search bar. If the name isn't long or unusual, which would make it challenging to get it right as it is, you might get similar items that just distract you from looking only at the item you're trying to buy. Instead, you can save time with Lens by scanning the barcode directly. Google will show you search results for that exact product, and from that page, you can compare prices, read reviews, or see whether there are any that are being sold in physical stores nearby and what they're priced at. You can also scan the barcode of any item you have at home to see where you can buy it locally, which can hopefully save you both time and money. Two, use Lens as a personal real-time translation assistant. Now, as I said, maybe you've already used Lens extensively while you were traveling overseas to help you translate menus, for instance. This is one of my favorite uses of Lens. In Japan, one time I even saved money at a place where the Japanese menu had lower prices than the English menu. I also use this translation feature a lot in international grocery stores as almost a new pair of eyes. Sometimes the variety of products can be overwhelming, and if you're in the US, the item cards or tags or whatever they're called should have the product names written in English, but they're sometimes not descriptive enough. And what are you gonna do, read each label? It's so much easier to just open Lens and have it translate in real time any words written on the packaging of each product, which usually gives me way more information about ingredients and what's actually in the package than the product labels alone. I can always differentiate between options pretty quickly and decide which one I want to get with the help of Lens. 
This can be incredibly helpful for making informed choices and avoiding any unwanted surprises, especially when dealing with food allergies or dietary restrictions. Three, another helpful use of Google Lens if you're in a grocery store where there are items or products you don't know how to use is to combine image search with a text query. For instance, these sweet potatoes are my absolute favorite and they're also very easy to prepare, but if you've never bought them yourself, use Lens and combine the snapped image with how to cook or recipes to get some inspiration for what to do with them before you even buy them. Four, for planning trips, tell me if you're anything like me. I do the standard Google searches for things like best things to do in whatever destination or must eat or must visit in that destination. But I also go on social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you like. And I like to see photos, read or hear about other people's experiences. And it's a way quicker way for me to visually get a sense of what to expect or to see what kinds of places sound or look more interesting to me. Sometimes I'll come across an image of something could be a really cool looking sculpture or building, and I'll want to know where it is. Maybe it can be for us a quick pit stop or detour if we're nearby. And with all the information Google has at their fingertips to train their models, Lens is actually really good at pinpointing exactly what you're looking at so you can plan a more exciting trip. And it doesn't need to be some famous landmark or anything. It could literally just be a hardware store in some small French town. Five, picking up text from anything another screen, a piece of paper, an ad. It even works on curved text and vertical text and on images where there's text of different orientations. I've used this to quickly call restaurants or businesses because I do a lot of research on my computer and if I'm already on their website, but find I wanna call them to ask a question, it's a bit faster to use Lens than to bring up the same site or do a Google search on my phone. On Pixel, it understands that it's a phone number and gives you the option to call directly. So you don't have to use the search results or copy the number just to paste it into your keypad. I've also used this for searching for tracking numbers because when you send packages, they'll typically give you a receipt with the tracking information and it's much easier to get it from Lens than to try to copy it into a search bar character by character. Text recognition has been part of Google Lens since it was first announced in 2017 and rolled out in 2018, and it has become such an integral part of Lens that it seems like other smartphone companies like Samsung and Apple have really taken notice. For example, the live text feature on my iPhone is not bad, and it does recognize tracking numbers and phone numbers and addresses, and it gives you direct links to directly use. Like for tracking numbers, it will give you a direct link to the carrier site to track. And for phone numbers, it'll give you a link to call directly so you don't have to copy and paste the number into your keypad. It also lets you translate the live text as well, which is really helpful and basically mimics the lens feature. But Apple's text recognition itself doesn't work quite as well for identifying texts of different orientations. It can do horizontal and vertical texts, but seems to get confused sometimes when the text is curved. So there we have it. Five new and slightly more creative uses for lens than what I covered before. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and I hope to see you in my next video.